pleasant evening to you in YouTube land. Delighted you tuned in and that we can study from God's holy word tonight. If you take your Bible and look with me in the book of John and the fourth chapter, I want to read two verses for the thought of our study, verses 23 and 24. Jesus, when he's speaking to the Samaritan woman, states, The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Worship has always played in a very important place or role in the people of God. If you go back to the book of Exodus and the fifth chapter, there was a divine commandment to let them come and worship me, said the Lord. There seems to be a charge that too many come to church today because it's Sunday and not with the intent and purpose of worship. Now do not misunderstand me. We're obligated to come upon the first day of the week, Hebrews 10, 25. But we need to come with the right motive and the right purpose to worship God. And in this lesson, I want us to think about the Lord's work in the Lord's way in regard to worship. The first thing I want to put into our mind is the local assembly is the church. When you think about the universal church, that's all the saved of all time, of all places who've been redeemed. But now when you think of a local church, it's the redeemed of a certain locality who've agreed to come and worship together. The universal church is perfect in every way, but the local church has some judgment to be made. But as a divine example, as Christians in this area, we come together, we assemble together as a local congregation. We are members of the Lord's body, but when we come together in the collective, we are the church. And upon the first day of the week, we're told to do certain things. In Acts 20 and verse 7, it said, upon the first day of the week, they broke bread. But it's interesting, it said, they came together and broke bread. They assembled together as the congregation and they partook of the Lord's Supper as commanded. The first day of the week belonging to God. Jesus rose on the first day of the week. It's the first of what we have. And we're giving God the very first of what we have. It's the Lord's day. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 in verse 1. It was on the Lord's day, the first day of the week. They laid by in store. We'll look at some more acts of worship. But what I want to do is have it in our mind. The purpose is to come together to glorify God and worship as directed. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, they were directed not to forsake the assembling of the saints. This during a time of great persecution. They said, even in the face of fear, even in the face of harm, you do not stop coming together as the collective, as the church, to worship according to the divine pattern. But the second thing I think we need to put down is God is the one to be worshipped. He is the object of our worship. In John chapter 4 and verse 24, it says, worship me. And if you go back and look at John chapter 4 and verse 23, it says, the Father is seeking such to worship him. We must never forget why we come together. He is deserving of our praise. He is deserving of our worship. He's the creator. We are his workmanship, as Paul states in Ephesians 2.10. And as his people, we're to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's what Peter said in 1 Peter 2.5. We offer up the sacrifice of praise to him because he is our God and we are his people. We are being built up a spiritual house to offer praises to him. But that brings up a third thought in our study. What we do in worship must come by divine authority. In John chapter 4 and verse 24, he said you must worship in spirit and truth. Look at that truth. God has never accepted worship without his authority. It matters not the dispensation. It matters not the time. It matters not the era. God said you worship according to my pattern. Now, under the Old Testament, they had a particular pattern they worshiped by that we no longer worship by because we're no longer under that covenant. We are under covenant with Christ, and thus we worship according to the New Testament pattern. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 9 that in vain they worship me, teaching the doctrines and the commandments of men. Now you think about my friend, we're not to follow the doctrine or commandments of men, we're to follow the teaching of Christ. We are to do that which he has authorized so that he is glorified. So what do we do on the first day of the week? Well, we see in Acts 20, again, when Pete, Paul met with the disciples, he preached. We proclaim the truth of God. 
We stand together and teach from God's word. We have divine authority to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 4 to preach the word. But then we have another command that when we come together from the book of Acts and the second chapter, and that is we pray that they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. They prayed together to the God of heaven. We have divine authority to go before the throne of God in prayer in the public assembly. But then third, I want you to consider two things we've already mentioned. The Lord's Supper. We come together on the first day of the week to reflect upon the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We reflect upon the fact he's coming again is what is said in 1 Corinthians 11, beginning in about verse 6. So we have a divine authority from the God of heaven to worship in spirit and truth and to do those things as directed by the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. So thus far we see we pray, we preach, and we partake of the Lord's Supper. But there's something else. We contribute or give to our means as we read in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 a few moments ago. We're giving to the work of the Lord. We're giving so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be spread. There is also benevolence with its own members. But one thing I need to bear in mind, I'm giving to God and so his work can continue. But there's something else we're commanded to do. In Colossians 3.16 and Ephesians 5.19, they were told to sing and make melody in their heart. Now the command I see is sing. Someone may say, well, can I play the instrument? I don't see authority for that. I see authority that God wants singing from the heart. He said you sing and you make melody from the heart. That is what is authorized. So when we come together as the people of God, we partake of the Lord's Supper. We give, we preach, we proclaim, we do all these things together and sing to the Lord and pray to the God of heaven so that he is glorified. Why do we do this? It has been authorized. We come together to worship the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. And we worship him, Jesus said, according to spirit and truth. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get back to doing the Lord's work in the Lord's way? Doing exactly what the Lord told us to do, no more, no less, but doing what he proclaimed so that he will be glorified. Question, do we worship according to spirit and truth? Let us do the Lord's work in the Lord's way. I want to thank you for studying with me this evening.